Hello, hello, welcome to lesson 9. Today we're going to talk about conditional statements, which is basically a statement of the form if something, then something. For example, if it is raining, then I will bring an umbrella. You can think of this as asking a simple yes or no question, where in programming, instead of a yes or a no, we will use a true or a false, which is of the type boolean. So you might be wondering why we care about these statements. Well, as a programmer, it is our job to write the logic to handle what we want to do in certain scenarios. So let's go back to the example. So there are many different weather conditions and we may want to dress differently according to each one. So to keep things simple, let's just stick with three weather types for now. So in my sketchboard, we have three different weathers, uh, snow, rain, and sunny. And then on the right, we have what items we can bring for each weather type. So I'm gonna draw some lines to match up what we should bring based on the weather. So if it's snowing, then we should definitely wear a coat. And if it's raining, we should bring an umbrella. And if it's sunny, we can just wear a t-shirt. So as humans, we've already been conditioned to understand what to wear based on the weather. However, for a computer, it has no concept of weather or what to wear. So basically the job of a programmer is to wire this logic together. Cool, I'm gonna erase the lines and the titles. And now let's actually write down the statements. So for the statements, we have if something, then something. Cool, so let's copy this statement three times because we have three different options. So we can do if this, then this, if this, then this. So now let's move the emojis into the correct spots. So if sunny, then wear a t-shirt. If it's raining, then bring an umbrella. If it's snowing, then wear a jacket. Cool, so now we have three different statements to handle these three different scenarios. If we had another weather condition, we can just copy and paste the statement. And now we can add another case. So if it's windy, then we can wear jeans. As you can imagine, in real life, there are so many different scenarios and it will take us forever to write down every single possible scenario. So what we can do is we can use a else statement, which only gets executed if the previous conditional statement evaluates to false. You can kind of think of this as a final safety net. For example, if it was cloudy with a chance of meatballs, and we don't know how to handle that scenario, we can just generalize it and tell the person to stay indoors. All we have to do is write else, then, and then do something. So in our case, all we want to do is tell the person to stay indoors. But we have one problem here, because this else statement only works on the previous statement. And in our case, the previous statement is checking if it is windy. So right now, we are actually asking four different questions. If it is rainy, if it is snowing, if it is sunny, and etc. Let me show you an example of what I mean. So if the weather is sunny, we're going to ask, is the weather rainy? No. And then we're going to ask, is the weather snowing? No. Then we're going to ask, is the weather sunny? And that's true. So we tell the person to wear a t-shirt. And then we ask if it is windy, which is false. So then we go into our else statement, and then we tell the person to stay indoors. So basically what we're doing is we're telling the person to wear a t-shirt and also stay indoors. But what we actually want to do is ask one simple question and do something based on the response. So how we can fix this is we can chain these statements together by adding an else in front of the next scenario. So we always start our statements with an if, and then if we want to chain it, we just do else if, and then else if again, and then else if again. Cool, so now let's repeat that same example. So if the weather is sunny, we check if it's raining, which is false check if it's snowing, false. Now we check if it is sunny, which is true. So now we tell the user to wear a t-shirt and then our statement ends there. And now let's try it with the meatball example. So now we check if it's raining, which is false, snowing, false, sunny, false, windy, false. Now it goes into the else statement, which just tells the user to stay indoor. So basically this is the template that we want to follow when we do conditional statements. We want to start with the statement with an if, and then we can have as many else ifs as we want. And if we want to catch all statement, then we have an else statement at the end. And that's basically how we use conditional statements to create logic to handle different scenarios. Cool, so now let's actually write some code. To write an if statement in Python, all you have to do is if, and then give it some condition, and then instead of a then, we put a semicolon at the end. And then you have to hit enter. So notice how there is a tab on this new line. So this is kind of similar to a function. So now we have to define the block of logic that we want to handle when this if statement is true. So for example, we can just do print and true. And then if we want to do an else if statement, we just do elif, E-L-I-F, and then we put in the condition, and then here we print elif. 
And then finally, if we want an else statement, all we have to do is else, and then we don't need any conditions at all, and we just put the colon, and then we just print else. Cool, now let's mimic what we did in the example. Let's create a variable called weather, and then let's set it to empty string. And now let's fill in the statement, weather equals equals snowing. So right here, I'm using two equal signs, which means we're checking for equality. So what we're doing here is we're checking if this string weather matches this string snowing. So in order for this to match, weather will have to be snowing like this. And then if it's snowing, let's just say snowing. And now let's do another case. LF weather equals equals sunny. Then let's print sunny. And then for the else case, let's just print else case. Cool, so now let's run the code. And now we see snowing because snowing matches snowing. And now let's change this to sunny. And let's run our code. And now we see sunny because sunny matches sunny. And now if we put meatballs and we click run, we're going to get the else case because it doesn't match this one or this one. And then it goes into the else case. If we want to improve this code, we should put it inside a function. So that way we can reuse this function over and over again. So let's do that. Let's create a function and call it define uh, what is the weather and it will take in a parameter called weather. And then all we have to do is indent all of these lines. And now we can get rid of this variable up here. Cool. So now if we run our code, nothing will happen because we're not calling our function. So to call our function, all we have to do is call it. So let's do what is the weather and let's pass it sunny. And now let's run the code and now we'll see sunny. And now we can ask another question. Let's put snowing, but with a capital S snowing. And now let's run our code. And here you'll see it hit the else case because when we check for equality, it checks that each character is the same. So the problem here is this is a capital S and this starts with a lowercase s. So if we change this to a lowercase s and we run again, um, we'll see that we get snowing. So this doesn't really feel like an actual application. Uh, so what we can do is we can use this function called input. So basically what input does is it asks the user to give a input and then we can use that input inside our program. So let's get rid of these two lines. Uh, one thing to know is that we need to store the input in a variable so that way we can use it later. So let's call the variable weather and then we type input and we open the parenthesis and inside the parenthesis we want to ask the user a question. Uh, so for us we'll ask what is the weather today and then after that we want to use this input inside our function. So now we can just call our function what is the weather and then we can pass it the weather. So let's run this code. And now the console will ask, what is the weather today, which matches up with the prompt from the input. So now we can type whatever we want. So let's type sunny and we hit enter. And now, as you can see, we got sunny back, which is this case. And if we run our program again, now we could type something else. So we could say snowing and hit run and we get snowing. This is actually pretty cool because now we're actually putting all the concepts we learned so far together to build a program that actually does something. Nice, let's also spice our code up. Now let's add another input so that the user can provide a number from one to five, specifying how their day is going. So let's use the input function again and create another variable called rating equals input. And let's ask, how is your day from one to five? So one thing to know is that when we collect input, the input is of type string. So let me prove that to you. Let's type print and then we can use the type function and then let's use it on the rating. And let me comment this line out and let's run the code. Uh, so the weather is sunny and let's put five. And now you see it says class type string. So since we want to deal with an integer value, we can cast the input to an integer. So how we can do this is we can surround the input with INT, which stands for integer. And if we open the parenthesis and close it, basically what this does is it will convert this string into an integer. And that's basically what casting does. It just converts one type to another type. Cool. So now let's get rid of this line and let's uncomment this out. And now let's add rating to our function. So weather and rating. And now let's also pass the rating into the call. Nice. Now that we also have a rating, we can make more complicated statements. So if the weather is snowing, we can add more if statements inside the current block. 
so that we can also print different things based on the rating. So since the rating is an integer, we can use the greater than and less than sign to compare two different numbers. So we can do if rating is greater than two, we can print happy. And then we can do else print sad. So let's test out our code. Let's say that it's snowing and we rate the day a three. And now you see it says snowing and happy. So let's try it one more time with the value two. Uh, so it's snowing and our rating is two. So notice how now it says snowing and sad. Cool. So another thing that we can do is that we can combine two statements together by using either an and or an or. So let's start with the and. So let's do elif weather equals equals sunny and rating is greater than two. So now this condition will only run if the weather is sunny and the rating is greater than two. Cool. So let's also try the or statement as well. Let's do elif weather equals equals sunny or rating equals equals one. And let's print sunny but sad. Cool. So basically how this statement works is if the weather is either sunny or the rating is a one, then we will want to print sunny but sad. So let's try this out. Let's hit run code. So let's hit sunny. And then let's put the rating of one. And here we'll see sunny but sad. Cool, let's run it again. So now we can say sunny and the rating is a five. And now we just get sunny. Cool, so let's try this one more time. And now let's say sunny. And let's say the rating was a zero. And now we get sunny but sad. And now let's run our code again. And now let's put a different weather. Let's put meatballs and let's put rating five. And now we go to the else case because we haven't wrote any logic to handle this case. Cool, so before we end this lesson, I just wanna leave this cheat sheet here so that way you can test this out for yourself. So on the left, you'll have the template for how to use the if statement. And on the right are the different operators that you can use. For example, the equal equal, the less than, less than equal, greater than, greater than equal. And then you have your conjunction, which is the and statement where you can join two statements together. Uh, union for or where only one of the statements have to be true for the whole statement to be true. And last we have negation, which is a not statement. And all it does is it flips the value. So for example, if it's true, it will flip it to false and vice versa. If it's false, it will flip it to true. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something new. Make sure to like this video and subscribe so that way you won't miss out on any new content.